probably drowned out the music. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So my aunt uh, Phyllis up here. And uh, the heritage that we have, started with our grandma, believing the word that has been passed down. And I'm here to celebrate her life. I'm here to celebrate the fact that she's walking on streets of old. And uh, the word is true. He's prepared a place for us. And death, where is your state? I've come to know Though my heart and flesh may fail There's an anchor for my soul I can say it is well For Jesus has overcome and the grave is overwhelmed The victory is won He is risen from the dead And I will rise When He calls my name No more sorrow No more pain I will rise Before my God, fall on my knees and rise. I will rise. There's a day that's drawing near when this darkness breaks to light. And the shadows disappear And my faith shall be my eyes For Jesus has overcome And the grave is overwhelmed The victory is won he is risen from the dead, and I will rise when he calls my name. No more sorrow, and no more pain, I will rise on eagle's wings before my God. I will run. 
before my God fall on my knees and rise. I will rise. I will Thank you so much. That was, was not only beautiful, but incredibly inspirational. So I appreciate that. Now, I understand there are some members of the family that would like to share some, some memories and some thoughts. So. <clears throat> well, <laughs> it's the most incredible lady that we're celebrating here today. Um, my mom was not only the best mother that a guy could ever have, but she raised some good kids. She left a legacy of good people. Our children are, are awesome and, and, and accomplished and we're really, really, you know, that starts with a legacy. It starts with the people before us and allowed us to to grow and to have dreams and my mom was the one who would push us to greater heights by the, the way that she would encourage us, the way she would talk to us, the way she would discipline us. And we're completely grateful to this lady. And anybody that knew her knew that they had met somebody special. One of the biggest things that I have always cherished in my heart and spoken on it many times when, especially lately when we've talked about my mom, one of the identifying characteristics of my mother was I am almost 56 years old and I have yet to this day ever hear my mom ever speak ill of anybody, ever. Not everybody can say that. She would always speak to the action of what that person might have done and says, I just, can't, I just don't understand why they would do that. I don't understand what they were thinking or something to that nature, but she never would speak ill of the person. And uh, you know, that says something. I think, it's an, I think it's a goal, a worthy goal. I think for anybody that, you know, if you, if you had that, she just never wanted to be in the gossip. She never wanted to be in the story. She just just wanted to look at the best part of the person and that was always inspiring to me as a son and to other people who have also said the th same things back to, to me. And uh, I truly think that my mother was an angel walking on this earth. Um, she was the mom that everybody's mother <laughs> would look at it's like, that lady's got it. She's got it. And you know, I. I I have lovely sisters and a brother that I love dearly, and uh, but all of them have their special special time about mom, I have special memories about mom and about things, and I'm not going to go into that. Uh, I'll let them talk on memories if they have that, that's fine. Um, I just wanted you to know my mom, and uh, there's, not a, there's not enough words that I could actually say that would describe the lady that sits or lays here before us. but. You know, she's not here. You know, she's in a better place. And that was the other legacy that she left her children, mm -hmm. was that she left us the gift of faith. And they gave us, she gave us the knowledge of Jesus. She, she'd take us to church, even though my, my father may not have gone, but she would take us to church. And she'd allow us to grow and allow us to make our own decisions. Um, also, experience some failure, which made us stronger people. And some parents want to maybe perhaps enable, she was not that person. Uh, even though she might have had that soft side, she also had that, uh, that uh, strong side. She would tell you what she thought. She would tell you what she, what she uh, believed in, which was really important. Um, because you never wanted to disappoint this lady. And I'll give you just one story of how that worked. And, uh, 
I got angry with my mother when I was about, I guess I was probably 13, 14 years old. We were living in Las Vegas. And I remember, I, I don't know, my mom wouldn't let me do something, apparently. Or <clears throat> I didn't think she was doing enough, a good enough job. <laughs> you know, so I thought I was going to run away. So I got my little gym bag out and I started throwing stuff in there. But she walks in the room and says, well, if you think you're going to leave, that's fine. I'm going to help you back. None of y'all mothers have ever done that to your children, I'm sure. But uh, she did. She started, to, and I'm looking at her. I'm like, hold on, now you're supposed to be upset that I'm leaving. <laughs> you know. And she would, uh, she would uh, look at me. No, if you don't want to be here, fine. I'll help you pack. And we won't, we, we, you know, it, it was just like we were going on a trip, packing up underwear and blah blah blah, you know, and that kind of thing, you know. And I'm like, hold on now. So I do remember looking back at her, and I started to cry. I'm like, well, I don't leave. <laughs> and you're not playing the same game I'm playing right now. And you're not participating like I wanted you to. So that was the thing that for me was inspiring. And you know, she allowed us. She'd allow us to do that. But you always knew where you had to go to to get your comfort. You had to. You knew where you were going to 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 get that word, that hug. Um, and even though these past few years, my mom didn't have a didn't have a. Uh, a good memory, short term wise. She can remember all these, all of you. She can remember her family. She remembered them. She might not forget a lot of them, but she remembered her family. And she remembered her friends. And she remembered her past. And she remembered where she came from. Um, even though my mom and dad lived in Florida for going on 30 years, her home was 252 North 20th Street. And she might be in Lake City, Florida confused but she was at 252 North 20th Street <laughs> so but uh, mom I love you you did so great and we'll see you again because that faith you gave us gave us an eternal home and, and we'll be with you and we'll see you again but we're celebrating this lady today and I love her thank you guys for coming <clears throat> Now I understand this. Uh, someone else that's that's sharing. Um, yeah, I'm gonna let my son go first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was really job. I, I wrote something down. I wouldn't be that good if I went off the cuff like that. So I wrote some stuff down yesterday, but um. <sighs> So, um, I'm Adam, I'm Valerie's son, uh, Phyllis Ann's grandson, uh, for those who don't know me. As I begin the difficult task of summarizing the greatest qualities of the matriarch of our family, I have to say the one thing I learned as I've gotten older is that everyone's perceptions of people they know are unique to them. So I won't begin to tell you how my grandmother was to you, I'll tell her how she was to everyone. She was a caring and loving woman, and she was that way to everyone she met. She loved her family dearly, and she navigated the difficult task of military life, of extensive traveling, new homes, new schools, and often covering the role of mother and father. She did it with love, and she did it with grace. She supported and loved my grandfather, Larry. Um, he called her Fifi. You would hear that all the time throughout the house. He'd be like, Fifi this, Fifi that. Um, he even painted it on the side of the boat that they bought. It was called the SS Fifi. <laughs> I think he only took it out in the water once, I think. <laughs> um, but she recognized him as the head of the household and she supported him as such, but she was also strong in that. And she would tell him when she thought he was wrong and she supported him when she thought he was right, and they worked together in that way. Um, she was a dedicated worker. She worked at Belk's for many years, and then J.C. Penney's. I remember all of us would get the Belk teddy bears with the sash of the year um, that it was, and I remember liking this every year. Um, when I was younger, my mom and myself um, faced, faced some difficulties, and Grandma and Grandpa took us in and they supported us and took care of us during that time. Um, many of my favorite memories are 
when we would go on vacation together, um, Panama City and all the amusement parks that are in Florida and Disney World. One of my favorite trips was Disney World when we were all together, the whole family. Even great grandma went with us that year, grandma Border. Uh, I remember being in the car and having playing the sliding bingo things where you would look for a silo or a cow. And, like I said, I don't think I ever won, but um, I, did. I remember um, one vacation we were um, traveling in Florida and we passed the Sexit. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it, um, Mekanopi. And I remember my grandma telling me the story of like this family of Indians traveling and the little Indian boy had to stop and use the restroom so the mom like got him out of the covered wagon and told him to go on the side of the road and, and use the restroom. And he turned around and said, Mekanopi, Mekanopi. <laughs> and grandma said that was how they named that town. <laughs> I don't know if that's really why the town was named that. <laughs> and I don't know if she made that up on the fly or if that's something she told you guys when she was younger. And But she was just so witty and she came up with stuff like that all the time and she was so funny. Like, I mean, even after her brain aneurysm, she was still so funny, cracking jokes all the time. It was, even though she couldn't remember stuff, she was still the same person. Um, so, uh, eventually my mom and I moved to West Virginia and many years passed where we were really far away from um, my grandma, but I became very close to my great-grandma uh, at that time. Like so much so, I was a 16-year-old boy and on weekends I would go stay the night with grandma and we would watch baseball games and we played dominoes um, with her friends and next door neighbors so it was me like hanging out with these old ladies <laughs> drinking coffee and I still drink black coffee like <laughs> um, but I got to hear a lot of great stories about my uncles and my my grandparents and my great aunts and uncles and pretty much everybody sitting in this audience um, So uh, one of the saddest memories I have is when I was getting close to graduating college at WVU and I was so excited that my grandparents were going to be coming up because they were responsible for me being strong enough to graduate and so a lot of it was going to be dedicated to them and unfortunately <coughs> my grandmother I heard a man who was true while packing to come up actually had her brain in prison. And it, it was a really hard decision on whether to walk for graduation or for good Florida to be with my family and um, do some convincing from my mom and stuff. I ended up walking and I still don't know if that was the right decision to this day, but um, I was so happy that my grandmother survived that. And she was so strong, she had to learn everything over again. She had to learn to walk again, talk again how to use a fork, um, everything. Um, she did it. And um, in 2011, my grandfather passed away. And so, you know, it was a bittersweet blessing. My grandfather had passed, but um, we brought my grandmother back up to West Virginia and I got to spend a lot more time with her um, and make up for many of the years where we lived states and states away. Um, though she was markedly different in terms of her memory and physical capabilities, she still had the same sense of humor and the same caring spirit. And I believe she even gained more emotion and empathy. I mean, she, you would give her anything. You would give her a glass of water and she'd start crying. Like it was the best gift she ever received. <laughs> And I think that says a lot. I think it says that she had a really strong sense of self. She was always exactly who she was supposed to be, and she knew who she was. Yeah. And so on this day, while I'm surely sad, as we all are, I'm not going to mourn her, but I will celebrate her. And I'm going to make a promise to her that I'll never forget her, and I will never stop sharing memories about her. I love you so much, Grandma, and I promise to live my life moving forward in a way that will make you proud. I'm honored to be your grandson, 
You have accomplished everything you were meant to and more. You are now free. And I love you. Adam, that was that was wonderful. Uh, just two observations. Uh, one, that town in Georgia. I'm I'm not thinking that's how it got its name. And uh, the the other thing is, I know why you lost at Audio Bingo. You didn't cheat. So, but thank you, thank you, uh, Valerie. I'm going to try to hold it together, but try. You don't have to hold it together. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Valerie. I'm her oldest child. And I, I'm not going to tell you about my whole life history, because I could be here forever and go on and on and on. You know me. I was... My mother always told me I was vaccinated with a big trolling needle. <laughs> <laughs> they could never get me to shut up. Like a kid. Granddad tried to bribe me on various occasions, but it never worked. I don't. I never got rich. <laughs> but uh, I second what Adam said and what my brother said today, because I could say, you know, I say the same about that. But. I'm so blessed and so honored to have taken care of my mother for the last eight years. I gave me a chance to get closer to her than ever before. I thought I was close to her already, but even closer. And I just want everybody to know that I love my mother with all my heart and always will. She's an angel. And I know she's gone to a better place, and she's standing right next to Jesus. And I thought, I will see her one day. What makes me happy is the fact that she's going to be there, and she's not going to, she's going to be able to walk without a limp. She's mm -hmm. going to be able to <laughs> be just whole, no cancer. No, uh, no aneurysm, no, she's going to be healthy and whole, Lord Jesus Christ. I praise his name, but I'll tell you, that was right there. Was a, a well, the Lord, she did. And she loved her children, she loved her family, she loved all her brothers and sisters, and I know that she always had a story about any one of them, and I could tell you many. All the time she told my aunt Karen she was adopted. But they didn't hold too many pictures of her of her dad and never told held, held many pictures of her in her wall and that was because she was adopted. <laughs> She'd always be running down the street without permission and my granddad had to drag her back. And uh, just she was funny, witty, beautiful inside and out. Gosh, was she beautiful. She never said nothing about anybody she always just exuded love you could be around her in that just aura just around her she was just just beautiful and i can say that i'm her daughter and i'm just saying that because she's my daughter because it's the truth absolute truth and i'm going to miss her terribly and i have so much to say i just love the lord i'm so glad she's going home the Lord called her home much too early for me. Because I would love to have her. So, but I know he wants her. She's got mission. She, he's got something for her to do. And I think that, I think that it's to bring us closer as a family, to love one another, hold on to each other fast, and know that we need to respect one another, love one another, be a family, get together. Don't lose sight of that. Don't just go home and forget about us. Let's be together. I want that because that's what my mother would want. 
I love you, Mom. I praise God every day for you. He sure loves you. And I know he did because you the way you were as a mother to me. You raised me. I hope I think the best you could. And I hope my qualities are like you. I, I just love you. There's so much more I can say and I hardly can get it out. But all I know is I love, love, love my mother. And I'm so glad I had this chance with her. And I love every one of you for coming today. I have so many wonderful family members. Cousin back there, Gina, I'm gonna tell her name. I don't know if she's gonna get sick of this, but I love that girl. She has always been there. She has. And I've got so many hearts and Karen was in my life when I was struggling. Uncle Rich has done great things for me and my mother, took us into his home, Aunt Phyllis and Uncle Rich. Whenever things were rough, Amen. I just have had family, family doing things for family. I am so, so lucky. And on the other side of that is my family, John's family, who also are the same way, Joanne, everyone. I can say something about everybody because they're always there. They're always concerned about us always saying that they care, not forgetting the day, asking about mom. I'm telling you, everywhere she went, she was loved. People liked her. No, I don't think there's one person that ever didn't like her. Mother. I can't imagine anybody not liking her because she just exuded love, love and respect and honor and respect for people. And I, she raised us good. She raised us. I'm, happy, I'm so happy about that because really, we're all doing well. We all have great families. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of my brothers. I'm proud of my sister. I am so glad to be Phyllis Martin's daughter. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> For raising me in a family like this, because not everybody can stay And I'm talking. My meet family to my extended family. And you know, I have cousins that have come from my dad's side of the family today. I was so happy. I, I praise God they were here today. I so didn't expect it, but I they came and it just made me so happy. So happy. So thank you, Butch and Diane, for being here today. You don't know how much that means to me. And Mark, thank you for the beautiful beautiful song today it was beautiful you couldn't listen to my mom off any better than that and she would have loved it so anyway i'm gonna go sit down <laughs> and listen to my brother say what he wants to say because <laughs> like i said i'm born with a big shoulder <laughs> last night because I want to make my mother proud. Uh, sort of like power. Sometimes I get to talk and I never shut up. I've always been that way. I can't stop them for who I am. And I guess I never will. But I decided to write some things down 
because there's so much to say about my mother. We, I could be here all day, but of course, we cannot do that. Um, so I wrote some things down, if you could bear with me. Um, this is uh, coming to my heart. First of all, I'd like to, say, I'd like to uh, thank everybody for coming today, um, from near or far, people that traveled. I really appreciate you coming here. Uh, it means so much to all of us. I know it would make my mother very happy to see all of you here as she is looking above from heaven. Uh, my name is Steve Martin. I'm Phyllis Martin's third child. Um, I just want to say she will forever be my mother, I tell you. She was one heck of a woman. Uh -huh. uh, from the time I was very young, I realized I had a mother who always cared, who always protected me, and who always was there for me no matter what. My mother taught me right from wrong and pushed me to always do the right thing, even when it was hard to do. Um, I have a little story concerning that. I said, I like the time when I was around 10 years old, I came home and I was chewing gum. My mother asked me where I got that gum from. Uh, and at that moment, I had guilt written all over my face, which showed her I had done something wrong. I proceeded to tell her I had gotten it from the store, knowing I had no money to pay for it. It was uh, bazooka gum. Uh, back in the day, that was my favorite gum, was bazooka gum, because it was something I loved. Uh, she asked if I had taken it, taken that gum. And even though I was scared to tell her I did, I told her yes. She then marched me right back to the store, where I apologized for taking that gum. She then paid for that gum. I think it was around three cents at the time. When I got home, I saw the disappointment on my mother's face. And in her eyes, it made me feel really sad that I hurt my mother this way. And I promised myself I would do my very best not to hurt my mother that way ever again. I hope I've made you proud. Mom, I love you. Yeah, my mother took care of me when I was sick. And with her love, she helped me make me well every time I was sick, just through her love and compassion for me. And when I obeyed the rules that were laid out before me, I found my life to be much simpler and much richer. She was, she was then and is now and forever will be my guiding light for my life. My heart is filled with love as she was my teacher, my best friend. And most of all, my hero, my mother. My mother was the most beautiful, caring and loving person I have ever known. The best way to describe my mother is like a rose, always showing love and compassion for others, as well as to whoever came across her path. My brother and my my brother and my sisters and I were so blessed and honored by God to be, be given a mother so genuine and true by emulating God's love to us through and through. Our mother has gone to be with the Lord without any pain, without any suffering. She has been made complete. I will miss my mother very deeply, but I will not forget her. Mom, I hope I make you proud by showing the love to others that you have always shown me. I will leave you two things. One, you can, you can shed tears, you can shed tears that she is gone, or you can smile because she lived. Mm -hmm. But my mother would say, do not stand at my grave and weep, because I am not there, I do not sleep. And the second of all is a, a, a poem I got that's 
uh, I, I, I wrote, I didn't write it, but I found it hit hard to me in my life, and this is from my mother. If roses grow in heaven, Lord, please pick a bunch for me. Place them in my mother's arms and tell her they're from me. Tell her I love her and miss her. And when she turns to smile, place a kiss upon her cheek and hold her for a while. Because remember, by remembering her is easy, I do it every day. But there's an ache within my heart that will never go away. I love you, Mom, and I will miss you tremendously. But we will be together again very soon. Thank you. That's her granddaughter. Okay. Her granddaughter, she has something special. She has Hello everyone. I've been preparing for today. I'm just here and considering I'm a fifth child, I feel like it's my responsibility to come up here and speak. And she claims so, and to this day I am, because that woman right there raised me. Amen. I might have not had the luxury of being there from the beginning, like the four of you. But from being a kid, being washed in the sink up until my years as a young teenager, she would always be there for me, give me advice, tell me she loved me, same as my grandfather. And I have a few fond memories myself. I got a chance to be there in Florida with them for those years. When I was at my dad's house, the, my second home was always with my grandparents. And every time I went over there, they would always just shower me with their love. Every day. Thank you. And at the time when I was much younger, around even before I was a, before I was in middle school, my grandma she worked at J.C. Penney's. She worked hard alongside my grandma. I was so thankful I got to spend Christmases with them. I mean, every time I go downstairs and. Go by the tree. They would, get, they would have plenty of clothes for me to wear, from J.C. Penney's, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but they loved me. They would take me to amusement parks, especially one day. It was my birthday. I sat down, and in the living room, and they said, and my grandpa said to me, "Where would you like to go today? It's all up to you." I said, "Wild Adventures." <laughs> They took me too. They took me right then and there. I, I just they said name it, and we went. I had a great time with them that day. Wanted them to get on the roller coasters, but mo mostly they did not want to. <laughs> <laughs> but I tried to get on as many as I could. I wouldn't go on the ones that would go up and down, up and down. Now I can't do that anymore. But. Um, and there would be times where we would be traveling to go see my mom and visit her, and they would take me. There would be times where I'd be driving, well, driving with them in the car, and then he would, my grandpa would just get mad. He's like, and my grandma would cut, and would hear her cousin, and she'd be like, Larry, because my grandpa had a mouth as a sailor, which is true. <laughs> Because he didn't like bad drivers, he had no tolerance for it. <laughs> and yeah. hmm. oh, my then my my grandmother, she 
would be there alongside of him most of the time. And when I was in middle school is when my grandfather, he passed away. I believe I was in seventh grade. And that morning, I will never forget it, I got up for school. And I was getting ready, and I was in the kitchen. And he would, he, was, he came out into the kitchen, and I asked him, hey, what's, I said, hey, to him, and he says, like, um, Brittany, I know you gotta go to school, but um, I gotta go to the hospital when I'm feeling good. And he went, and, that, and I could say, to this day, I wish I would have given him a bigger hug, a big a hug at all before he left. But I would have known that would have been the last time, near the last time I would have seen him. And, and before that is when my grandmother had her downfall too, which was the brain aneurysm. And my grandpa stood right by there, and he took care of her, held her hand. When she was sick, he helped her every day. And it hurt him very much, but I appreciate him for that. I really do. And I just um, can say that um, he might not be with us here today, and I wish he was. And, but my grandma outlived him, unfortunately. <coughs> I was so thankful that he's at peace just like she is right now. And I know that she has no more suffering, no more of that at all. She'd be happy and she's blessed to be where she is now. And I would miss them both every day of my life and continue. When I first heard that my grandma had a lung cancer. I dropped everything I did and everything I had and everything I was doing. I didn't care. I came straight up here. And I'm glad I came when I did because if I didn't, I wouldn't have seen her the way she was sitting in her chair alive and well. And I'm so glad I had that luxury because if I, because I would have been more broken, but it gave me some peace. It really did. And I got to hold her tell her I love her, and that's all I wanted to make sure I could say to her before something like this happened. And that would be about it. Thank you. <laughs> like I said, I'm not sure the public speaker. It's <laughs> okay, you did perfect. Brittany, you did perfect, <laughs> Thank you. Well, of course, we're here at a time that has to be time of sadness. Because everybody here is mourning the passing of somebody that you loved, a person who was important in your life. And as we were talking a little bit about yesterday, God understands it. And he understands our need to express grief or to, to feel numbness or whatever we're experiencing right now. He, he understands that. But you know, we're, we're here this morning for something that goes beyond just the sadness and the mourning and the, and the grief. Because we've gathered here this morning to hear the promises of God and to claim the support and the comfort they offer. You know, Jesus Christ said, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And according to the Apostle Paul, no one of us lives, and equally no one of us dies for himself alone. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. Whether therefore we live or die, we belong to the Lord. Let's have a word of prayer together. Almighty God, you're, you're present with us right now. We know it because we feel it. You know, you sent your son, Jesus Christ, into our world and into our space to bring immortality to light. And we thank you, particularly this morning, that, that through his death, he destroyed the power of death. 
And by his resurrection, he opened the kingdom of God to us all. Help us to know that because he lives, we're also going to live. And that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor anything else in all creation can separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Now I'm going to share with you some passages of Scripture. Uh, the first one is one that some of y'all might know. It's one of those uh, passages that you learn when you're, when you're little. And so if you want to say the words along with me, I want you to feel free to do that. Uh, the first scripture I want to share with you is the 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And from Paul's letter to the Romans. For I reckon that the sufferings we now endure bear no comparison with the splendor as yet unrevealed which is in store for us. For the created universe waits with eager expectation for God's sons and daughters to be revealed. Up to the present we know the whole universe groans in its inward parts as if in the pangs of childbirth. Not only so, but even we, to whom the Spirit was given as the first fruits of the harvest to come, are groaning inwardly while we wait for God to make us his sons and daughters and set our whole bodies free. For we have been saved, though only in hope. If God is on our side, who's against us? He did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. And with this gift, how can he fail to lavish upon us all he has to give? Who will be the accuser of God's chosen ones? It is God who pronounces acquittal. Who can condemn? It is Christ. Christ who died and more than that was raised from the dead, who is at God's right hand and indeed pleads our cause. Then what can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or hardship, can persecution, hunger, nakedness, peril, or the sword? In spite of all, overwhelming victory is ours through him who loved us. For I am convinced that there is nothing in death or life, in the realms of spirits or superhuman powers, in the world as it is, or the world as it shall be, in the forces of the universe, in heights or depths, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And finally, I want you to listen to these words from John of Patmos, words he wrote in the Revelation. Because this is, this is our future. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with people, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. The throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. 
and there shall be no night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Amen. Praise God for these readings from his word. You know, I don't think it's ever easy to say goodbye. And it's especially hard when you're talking about somebody whom you love and whom you know so well. And even when we believe, even when you believe that you'll see him again, it's still hard to let go. I remember when I was a little boy, and this was a long time ago, we lived in Norfolk, Virginia, and my father worked for the Newport News Shipbuilding in Dry Dock. And every now and then he'd need to make business trips up here to, to Pittsburgh. And even though I knew he was only going to be gone a couple of days, and I knew he was coming back, and I knew that when he came back, he'd have in his suitcase presents for my sister and I. This was before my brother was even born. I still remember how sad I felt standing on the tarmac, which shows how long it was ago, you know, at the chain link fence, watching my father go up into the airplane. You know why it was hard? Because saying goodbye is something difficult to do. And of course, that's especially the case today as we say goodbye to Phyllis. A woman whom I think everybody knew, knows, it certainly was shared in the memories, never met a stranger. And based on Valerie, what you and Jennifer told me yesterday afternoon, whose whole personality could be summed up in one word that you used over and over again, spunky. <laughs> Yes, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, losing a person like that is hard to handle. Kind of makes you sad and numb inside. And even though I hope everybody here knows that all you're facing, this is it, all you're facing is a time of separation. That's it. In other words, I hope that you trust that the day is coming when God is going to recreate his universe. And when that day comes, we're going to be able to join with all those who have died in a brand new world, a recreated world, a world where there are no aneurysms and no cancer and no strokes. And even though I hope that you know that you're going to see Phyllis again and not spend a day with her, but spend eternity, right now is difficult because it's difficult to say goodbye. But I'll tell you, I don't think God wants us to experience that all by ourselves, without any kind of help. And I'll tell you, I think there are two things that y'all can start doing now. Two things, right this minute, that'll help you through this time of sadness. And I want to share those two things with you right now. Now, before I say anything else, let me be crystal clear with you. I don't want to deceive you in any, any way. There are no words that I can say that's going to take away the sadness. I don't have that power. Never have, never will. But I do think these are two things that, that you might want to keep in mind. Two things you can do until you see Phyllis, your mom, again. You see, first, you can simply believe. You can simply trust God. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a confession to you. Sometimes that is made way too difficult or complicated by minister types like me. They've got all kinds of systems you've got to do. It's actually really, really simple. Let me tell you what I mean. Y'all can simply trust that Phyllis was and is and that we are and will always be in the hands of God. In His loving and gracious and merciful hands. Now, this is something we can believe. But even if there are times when we're not sure, you know, that we got some questions, maybe even some doubt, that doesn't change the fact that Christ was born and that he died and was raised. 
And that doesn't change the fact that we are still in those same gracious and merciful hands. I tell you, that's one thing you can believe. And you can also trust that just like God led Phyllis through the valley of the shadow of death, one day he's going to do the same thing for us. Now remember the psalm we read a little while ago? Some of y'all were saying the words with me. Well, God who is like such a good shepherd, taking care of his flock, man, he has already led Phyllis through the valley of the shadow of death. That's a done deal. That's past. You see, he's already done that for her. And when it's our time, he's going to do the same thing for us. And that's something else we can believe. And I'll tell you, because of that, y'all can trust that you're going to see Phyllis again. Now, I said that earlier. I'm going to say it again. You're going to see Phyllis again. Now, I want you to imagine. You're going to see her in a new heaven, and you're going to see her in a new earth. And I'll tell you something. If heaven has a department store... <laughs> Phyllis is going to be pushing clothes, right? <laughs> Probably. Because I think now Belk is in heaven, you know. <laughs> she's going to be pushing clothes. But I'll guarantee you, she's going to be talking to folks, right? And it's going to be easy to find Phyllis. It's going to be easy to find your mom, right? Because all you have to do is listen and when you hear somebody singing the old rugged cross mm -hmm. or in the garden, that's going to be her, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, Phyllis is going to be there. And you know what may be the most exciting thing of all? She is going to remember all that stuff that the aneurysm took away. I'm telling you, as you move through the sadness, you can believe, you can trust in God. And that's the first thing you can do until you see her again. But remember I said there are two things. Because second, starting this afternoon, y'all can remember Phyllis. Now, I'm not going to blow any smoke. I didn't know her. But y'all did. And even though I didn't know her. You can remember. Y'all can start remembering as soon as you leave here today. And you can remember all the big stuff, a lot of which y'all shared. You know, character, qualities of character, like her empathy and her sense of humor. And of course, her strong faith in, in God and in the Lord Jesus Christ. What did you, what did you say, Valerie, about her? She exuded Love? My gosh. Imagine a person who exudes love. But it wasn't just love because she also exuded strength and determination as she recovered from that aneurysm. Now that you can remember. But I'll tell you even more important than that, y'all can remember just how important all of you were to her. You see, starting today, y'all can remember her. And as you remember, Man, you can tell and retell the stories about Phyllis and their stories you know so well. And I got to believe there are a lot of funny ones. And I'm talking about things that some of y'all have shared with me the last few days. You know, about how she snuck out of the house. <laughs> went into somebody else's house when she was a girl. Went under the bed. Of a, of a little boy slept there all night so she'd be ready to play in the morning? That's a story you can remember. Or, and, and for some reason, I find this one really interesting. You told me this yesterday. About how she, at, at church camp, la locked a group of Baptist ladies in the bathroom? Because they were gossiping? Tell me she wasn't God's instrument right there. <laughs> And Karen, I, you know, Karen, I, and, and I'm gonna, I, you weren't adopted. <laughs> you, you, you really weren't. And, and I know your daddy had pictures of you in his wallet. You see, those are the stories you can remember, and those are the stories you can retell. And, I, and you know, when you do that, you're going to be doing two things. 
One, you're going to be keeping her alive in your own heart. And, and y'all who knew her, that's, that's really important. But you're going to be doing something else. You know, I've been listening to that little boy. He was crying, but he was also laughing and doing all kinds of stuff out there. You know, he doesn't know her. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't know her. But he can if you share with him. He can if you show him the pictures. You can if you, he can if you sh- share with him the memories. Absolutely. Now, the second thing you can do is you can remember. Now, like I said, saying goodbye isn't easy. And I don't believe God expects us to do without feeling sadness and without feeling grief. Even though we know the separation is only temporary. No, it hurts. But after that initial sadness eases, I want to challenge you to do the two things we've talked about today. In other words, when you leave this afternoon, I want you to make the decision to trust in God and to remember Phyllis until you see her again. Amen. Let's pray together. Look, God, right now we join your whole church. We're talking about the church of the past and the church of the present. And we're offering you thanks and praise for everything you've done for humanity through Jesus Christ. Man, you gave him to live and die for us and in so doing you've disclosed your gracious purpose for the whole world and shown that there's no limit to your love. And then by causing him to rise from the dead, you have promised that those who put their faith in him can experience a little bit of that resurrection life right now. We thank you for the assurance and hope of our faith and for all those whom you have received into your eternal joy. Especially today, we lift our hearts in gratitude for the life of Phyllis now gone from among us. For all the goodness to her during her life and for all she was to those who loved her and for everything in her life that reflected your goodness and love. In the following silence, we thank you for the life of our sister, Phyllis. And now we bless you. That for Phyllis, all previous weakness is past and forgotten. The aneurysm is no more. The cancer is no more. She no longer has to fear strokes. In fact, death itself lies behind her, no longer to be feared. But Lord, here's the hard part. Help us to be content to release her to you, her father and our father. Assure us that in your keeping, she's going to be safe, her work and her, your work and her complete. In fact, surround all who, us and all who mourn with your unending compassion. Don't let grief overwhelm your children or be without end or worse of all cause them to turn against you. Instead Lord help us all travel on from this day with more peace assured of the reality of your promises and then in your good time reunite us with those whom we have loved in that one great kingdom of your love where there will be no more tears and no more parting Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray, praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The service will conclude at the cemetery. This will conclude the service here at the funeral home. If you'd like to come pay your final respects, we'll start Thank you. I gotta give you a hug. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you.
I lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not smite you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. We have entrusted our sister Phyllis into the hands of God. We now commit her body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Having a whole trust and confidence in the mercy of our Heavenly Father and in the victory of her, His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord who died, was buried, and rose again for us, and is alive and reigns forever and ever. They shall never again feel hunger or thirst, because the Lamb who is at the heart of the throne will be their shepherd, and will guide them to the springs of the waters of life, and God will wipe all tears from their eyes. In truth, in very truth, I tell you, a time is coming, indeed, it is already here, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and all who hear shall come to life. For as the Father has life-giving power in himself, so does the Son by the Father's gift. Let's pray together. O oh Lord, you are the Alpha and the Omega. You are the first and the last. You are the beginning and the end. We believe you were with us. We know you were with us at our birth. Therefore, you at, we ask you to be with us throughout our lives. And since we trust that you are with us throughout our lives, we ask that you be with us at our death. And because we know that your mercy will not fail us even then, we ask that we not die but rise to life everlasting in your presence. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which is beyond our utmost understanding. Keep guard over your hearts and thoughts in Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessings of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. This concludes the service. Please join with one another as you go on to the website immediately on your departure.